There's one more nice thing we can do with homomorphisms. Um, so if you remember back to when we first started talking about vector spaces, one example of how we can produce vector spaces is by thinking about um, spaces of functions from a fixed set S to the real numbers. Right? So um, if you fix a set S, it could be finite or infinite, it could be R, it could be anything really. Um, the collection of all functions from that set to uh, the real numbers forms a vector space. And why were we able to do this? Well, it was because to define the sum of, uh, sorry, <laughs> to define the sum of two functions, right, we had to define what is this as a function from S to R. To do that, you just have to say what it produces as a function, right? What its outputs are. And we defined it this way. We'll evaluate f on its own, because f is a function from s to r. Here, little s is an element of big S. Um, evaluate g on its own at little s, and then just add the, add the results. And then for our scalar product, if you have a real scalar r, um, r times f evaluated at s was just r times f of s. Right? And this product right here, this is the product in R, right? because f is producing real numbers, and r is a real number. So this multiplication is real number multiplication. And this sum right here, this is addition in R. So the reason that we were able to turn this, functor, this function space into a vector space was because in the uh, range space r, we had an addition and we had a scalar multiplication. But this is actually true for any vector space. Right? If we replaced the, the range space uh, with any vector space, we would still have an addition and we would still have uh, we would still have a scalar multiplication. So uh, we can actually think about, we can form a vector space by, the, uh, by using the collection of all functions from a set to a vector space. So, so consider uh, a set of functions from a set to a vector space. I'm going to call the vector space w. You'll see why in a second. So w here is a vector space. Okay. So for this collection, we can turn this into a vector space by defining the addition of two functions to be you know, exactly like we did in the last example, um, f of s plus f uh, uh, plus g of s. And then for scalar multiplication, r times f of s, that's going to be r times f of s. Right? But this time, this scalar multiplication is in w. And this addition, this is the vector addition in w. Okay? So if our range space is a vector space, then we get a vector space of functions whose range is that vector space. Um, so this is something you can do in general, but there's a particular example of this that will be important to us, and in fact will be incredibly important to us, and that is the space of linear maps. So consider the set of all linear maps from V to W. So we'll call this collection um, either, some people call it hom vw, hom to sort of represent homomorphism. Um, some people just use the letter l, uh, which is OK, I guess. There's not really a super standard uh, notation for the collection of linear maps from v to w. So I guess we'll use this, because it's as good as anything else. Um, so we saw just a second ago that the space of all functions from v to w form a vector space, right? Um, although I guess I guess I should point out that um, so we've verified so we've verified closure closure of addition and scalar multiplication. All of the algebraic properties, the all the other axioms that you need to have a vector space, 
those are all satisfied because when it comes right down to it, they all turn into algebraic properties of addition and scalar multiplication in W. Also, um, we have a zero function, right? The zero function is the function that just always gives you the zero vector in W. And then an additive inverse function is the function that just gives you the additive inverse in W. So I know this looks, I guess I should write it like this so it doesn't look totally trivial. Um, so all of the other 10 acts, all of the rest of the axioms other than closure uh, follow immediately from the corresponding axioms in W. Okay, um, so to demonstrate that the collection of linear maps from V to W is a vector space, we can actually just show that it's a subspace of all functions from V to W, right? We know that the space of all functions is a vector space. Here I'm writing the same thing. Uh, we know that the space of all functions is a vector space. So to know that the collection of linear maps uh, is a vector space, we just need to know that it's closed under addition and scalar multiplication. Right, so um, if f and g from v to w are linear maps or homomorphisms, is f plus g? Well, let's check. How do you check if something is a linear map? You check if it preserves structure. Right, so um, take our sum function and apply it to a linear combination, right? To remember, to check that it preserves structure, we really just need to check that it preserves uh, linear combinations of two vectors. So by definition, this is f applied to a1, v1. Uh, sorry, f applied to a1, v1 plus a2, v2 plus g applied to a1 v1 plus a2 v2 right by definition in this vector space the sum operation uh, just plugs your input into each function separately and then adds on the outside uh, okay but now we can use the fact that f is a linear map so f preserves structure so we can pull this linear combination apart and the same thing with g so we get a1 f of v1 plus a2 f of v2 plus a1 g of v1 plus a2 g of v2. Okay, but now if we pair these up in just the right way, right? Here's a term with a1. Here's a term with a1. So this is a1 times f of v1 plus g of v1, okay? And then here are terms with a2, here and here. So this is a2 times f of v2 plus g of v2, okay? And now finally, so this is a1 times, this piece right here, this is the definition of f plus g applied to v1. And then over here as well, this is the definition of uh, f plus g applied to v2, right? So is the sum of linear transformations a linear transformation or a linear map? Yes, the sum of linear maps is a linear map because it preserves structure. Uh, so I guess technically I also need to show that scalar products also, the scalar product of a linear map is a linear map, but the argument is very similar. In fact, it's easier. So this, um, this demonstrates that the collection of all linear maps from one vector space to another is itself a vector space. That will have big consequences for us later. It's, uh, I'm sure it's not obvious right now that it is that meaningful. But in fact, it will give us uh, thinking very deeply about this kind of vector space will let us uh, rephrase a lot of the linear algebra that we've done so far in, uh, in ways that will make it easier to handle. 
one special case of this kind of uh, this kind of function this space of linear maps from one vector space to another is when the vector space v and w are actually the same so those are called automorphisms so an automorphism automorphisms i guess i'll call them ought ought v the collection of automorphisms this is just uh, linear maps from v to v so linear maps that have the same range space as domain space and you know as important as these function space these linear map spaces are the spaces of automorphisms will turn out to be doubly important and we'll see that in the coming weeks <laughs>